This Void 3.0 build is so incredibly powerful and it works great with literally every PvP playstyle. No joke, I think that once you learn the proper setup, the current Night Stalker has one of the best toolkits the Hunter class has ever seen. There are so many different things you can do with it and it can be customized to work well on a ton of different weapons and setups. You can build into having truly infinite invisibility, crazy dominant suppression spam, and even a way to frequently see your opponents through the walls. Just wait until the section where I talk about exotic armor. The level of synergy in this build is insane. Let's start off with stat builds and mods. Your first goal should be to reach 100 mobility and 100 recovery. Mobility is particularly important because it makes your dodge cooldown faster, and as you will see later in this video, the dodge and invisibility is an integral part of the build. The next stats you should be prioritizing are intellect for faster supers and strength for more smoke bombs. Try to go for a minimum of 50 to 60 on both of these, and remember that the fragments we'll be going over later will help you reach those numbers. I also recommend the popular Radiant Light and Powerful Friends mods that will give you a ton of extra stats. The Discipline stat can be somewhat valuable here, but it totally depends on what you focus on for the remaining parts of the build. I would put the least emphasis on Resilience for this build, but I do think you should have at least 20. You should put one or two Utility Kickstart mods on your Stasis Cloak in order to help regenerate your dodge. There are a few more mods that you'll definitely want to use, but since they depend on your Fragment and Aspect choice, I'm going to mention those in a different section coming up. Announcement time! I just partnered with Advanced GG. They make amazing focus and energy drinks that will help you play better while using this Hunter build because they're actually the only clinically proven supplement shown to improve gaming performance. I've been drinking Advanced for a long time because it tastes amazing, the bonus energy is great, and I'm clear about what I'm actually drinking because all of their products are open label. So click the link in the description and use code SHADOW at checkout for 10% off, or if you're fast you can get 30% off with code SHADOW30. For the super ability, Nightstalkers choose between Spectral Blades, Shadow Shot Deadfall, and Shadow Shot Mobius Quiver. Unlike in previous years, these can now be chosen independently from everything else, so your choice here won't have an impact on the rest of the build. I strongly recommend choosing the Spectral Blade Super. I want to be clear that it's not broken and doesn't need a nerf, but it's easily the best roaming super in the game if you know how to use it correctly. That means jumping before light attacking to move faster, always using the heavy attack to go back invisible and take less damage, and using the invisibility to sneak up on opponents instead of rushing them head on. Under no circumstance should you ever look like this while using the Spectral Blades. I'd say the next best option is Mobius Quiver. It shoots off two volleys of tracking arrows, but since the suppression has relatively short range and the arrows don't one-shot, it's very easy to avoid and survive them. Lastly, Shadow Shot Deadfall has a very long range, sucks in opponents, and can be used as a trap, but since it only fires one tether and it takes about three sentries to actually suppress opponents, it's relatively easy to counter. Like straight up, if I'm fighting against another super, I'd use my Spectral Blades over either of the Shadow Shot options. Even after the reworks, the Shadow Shot just sucks at countering other supers, and that is truly unfortunate. Moving on to the jump, the Strafe Jump is the best choice here because it allows you to completely change directions like you can see on screen. Triple Jump is pretty viable, but I wouldn't recommend High Jump because it often leads to overextensions and lack of in-air control. Grenade choice can depend on which variation of the build you're using, and I'll get into that soon, but overall I prefer the Void Wall. It deals a massive amount of damage very fast, and especially if you throw your smoke onto the target and follow it up with a Void Ball, it will melt any target. Vortex is also very good now that it sucks people in, but because there is a delay before it starts dealing damage, it is fairly easy to survive it. Spike grenades deal a decent amount of damage, but it takes good aim and a good map if you want to effectively place them on walls. Magnetic grenades stick onto opponents and have generous tracking, but I don't think they're particularly powerful compared to the other options. Axion Bolts are fantastic and they will track your opponents, but they don't track as fast as the Warlock ones and they don't really pair well with the Smoke Wombo combo. Scatter Grenades deal a ton of damage if you perfectly land them, but since their area of effect isn't too large, I personally wouldn't recommend using them at all. Last but definitely not least, Suppressor Grenades are perfect for shutting down supers and activating the stylish Executioner aspect, so let's jump into which aspects are best. I don't think there is really any room for negotiation here, Vanishing Step is a must-use Night Stalker aspect. Regardless of what dodge you choose, it will replace it with this new animation that travels faster, further, and makes you invisible. This is incredibly strong, and later we'll get into how you can actually exploit it to its maximum potential with exotics and fragments. I think the other two aspects are both pretty good, and you can kind of use either one depending on the rest of the build. Trapper's Ambush will allow you to make yourself invisible with your smoke, and it will also give you access to Quickfall, aka Shadow Dive. Hey, I mean, I didn't come up with that name, I promise. Shadow Dive consumes your smoke charge, but it provides several advantages over just using the normal smoke bomb. It gives you a couple extra seconds of invisibility, a slightly longer weakening effect on nearby opponents, and it can be used as a movement ability to escape sticky situations. It can also be spammed during your Spectral Blade Super for extra maneuverability, which is fantastic. The last aspect is probably the most nuanced and difficult to use effectively, but if mastered, it can be incredibly effective. 
Stylish Executioner provides wall hacks and invisibility after a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target is defeated. Throwing a smoke on an opponent and then finishing them off is like the bread and butter of a Night Stalker toolkit, so gaining invisibility and wall hacks from that simple move is amazing. If you pair this with the Echo of Undermining Fragment, all grenade kills will also proc Stylish Executioner. It's also worth noting that this aspect applies to your teammates as well. Like if your teammate suppresses or weakens a target and then you kill them, you will get the Stylish Executioner. Like in this clip, my opponent is barely touching my teammate's smoke, so it awarded me with invisibility and wall hacks. I found that the best way to reliably activate Stylish Executioner is with a suppressor grenade because the suppression lasts a full 5 seconds. Before we talk about fragments, let's go over exotic armor because it can really have a massive impact on the overall build. The bombardiers are an insane option that I want to highlight here because I haven't really heard anybody talking about them. When you dodge, this exotic causes you to eject a little bomb that explodes and deals damage, but more importantly, it suppresses everyone within 7.5 meters for a whole 7 seconds. This pairs beautifully with the stylish executioner aspects because whenever you kill a suppressed target, this aspect will make you invisible and give you wall hacks. In fact, you can just throw a smoke on an opponent and then dodge and it will blind them, slow them, suppress them, kill them, and then fully recharge your smoke, make you invisible twice, give you wall hacks, and also suppress anyone else who happened to be nearby. The best part is you don't even need to use your smoke to get all of those benefits. Whenever anyone dies after being suppressed by the bombardiers, you get all of those insane benefits. Bombardiers are also great for snipers because they act as a kind of built-in panic button to deter aping shotgunners, and even in the worst case scenario, the bombardiers will often kill the opponent after you die. If you pair the suppressor grenade with this setup, you'll be super good at countering supers, removing your opponent's abilities, and also just constantly staying invisible and getting wall hacks. If you're watching this video during Season 16 and want to make this setup even more absurd, just equip the Energy Vampirism Seasonal Mod. This will recharge 20% of your suppressor grenades simply for suppressing a target, so you'll be able to get even more of those grenades and just spam suppression. I tried using other seasonal mods like Suppressive Glaive, and while they are amazing for getting infinite invisibility in PvE, they don't do anything in the Crucible. The next exotic I want to mention is the Graviton Forfeit. This increases the duration of all invisibility effects, and while you're invisible, your melee regenerates faster, you reload faster, and your recovery is greatly increased. Considering that this build focuses on invisibility quite a bit, it goes without saying that these buffs just passively enhance the whole setup. The typical Stompies and Dragon Shadow setups are of course still viable here, but they don't fit the build for any particular reason. Dragon Shadow gives handling and mobility buffs after dodging, so I suppose that pairs nicely with the Vanishing Step aspect that also makes you invisible after dodging. If you want to really take the radar manipulation setup to the next level, you could always put on the Gemini Jesters to remove your opponent's radar when you dodge. Players tend to freak out when you remove their radar and make dumb mistakes, so this exotic will probably net you a lot of free kills on confused opponents. However, since you're already going to be off the radar by being invisible, this exotic might be a little redundant in some situations. Six Coyote will give you an extra dodge charge that can come in handy for those invisibility dodges and also allows you to dodge back to back for very extended invisibility. I think this is a pretty underrated choice and actually synergizes very well with the Void 3.0 toolkit. Wormhusk is another option that is sure to annoy your opponents and help you survive gunfights where you certainly should have died. Just dodge to go invisible and regenerate a good chunk of your health in the process. The last exotic I want to mention is the Kepri Sting. These will make your smoke do considerably more damage and also give you wall hacks when standing in your smoke. Considering that you're probably going to be smoking or shadow diving pretty frequently to go invisible, having wall hacks at the same time is an extraordinarily nice bonus and it can help you plan the perfect stealthy attack. There are a ton of good options for fragments, but I think Echo of Dilation is absolutely mandatory. It allows you to crouch walk super fast, provides enhanced radar, and a massive stat bonus of extremely important stats for this build. Since crouching temporarily removes you from the radar, it's often a good idea to crouch while you're not invisible if you're trying to remain off of the radar. I think Echo of Persistence is a very important fragment because it increases your invisibility duration. The real power of this build comes from being frequently hard to see and off of your opponent's radar, so having that extra 2 seconds on the duration is incredible. After those, I would say it comes down to personal preference and you can kind of pick whatever you want, so I'm going to recommend some of my favorites. Echo of Domineering gives extra discipline and then it reloads your weapons and grants 9 seconds of mobility after suppressing, so I'd recommend using this if you're using the suppressor grenade. Echo of Undermining will make your grenades weaken opponents and also activate Stylish Executioner on any grenade kill. Echo of Expulsion gives a nice intellect boost and also causes fun explosions, so it's an overall solid option. Echo of Leeching immediately starts health regeneration upon a smoke or regular melee kill and I actually think this one is pretty awesome. The last one I'd recommend is Echo of Remnants because it just makes your grenades last a couple of seconds longer. The thing about this build is that it's easy to pick up but difficult to master. 
The core gameplay of this build revolves around smoke, invisibility, and radar manipulation. Destiny players typically rely heavily on their radar, so invisibility is insanely powerful and often rewards you free kills on unsuspecting opponents. When using your smoke to go invisible, keep in mind that it will just sit there on the ground and ping your enemy's radar. If you're trying to go on a flank and want to be off the radar, just make sure that you don't use your smoke to go invisible while you're over there because it will ping your opponents. Going invisible also makes this fairly loud noise, so overall it's just best to go invisible before flanking or going on any rotation. If you do this strategically with a smoke bomb, it will work beautifully and really confuse your opponents. Like look at this poor titan who tried punching a non-existent enemy. Another thing to keep in mind is your team composition. If your teammates are all running Void, Dialish Executioner becomes more powerful because you can play off of all their Void abilities. When considering your invisibility uptime, you might also want to reconsider which dodge you're using. You can recharge your smoke with Gambler's Dodge and thus chain infinite invisibility, but Marksman's Dodge has a shorter cooldown, reloads your weapons, and has the exact same animation due to the Vanishing Step aspect. Lastly, keep in mind that double jumping or beginning your sprint will put you on the radar regardless of if you're invisible or not. So if you're trying to be stealthy while invisible, you're free to continue your sprint, but make sure you avoid starting your sprint while you're sneaking up on the opponent. If everyone who's watching my channel today subscribed, I would hit my goal of 100,000 subscribers literally within a few hours. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit the sub button, and then go watch this video about the 10 stages of every hunter man. It's funny and I promise you won't regret watching it. Goodbye.